Is your medication causing numbness and tingling? Numbness and tingling, aka a neuropathy, is a known side effect of certain common and plenty of not so common medications. In this video, we're going to review what medications might cause a neuropathy as a side effect and what you can do if you have to take one of those medications to help prevent a neuropathy from happening in the first place. Hello, my name is Dr. Grant Cooper, and I am the co-founder and co-director of Princeton Spine and Joint Center. Now, the first class of medication that we're going to discuss that can cause a neuropathy are chemotherapeutics. This is a tough one because if you have cancer and you need the chemotherapy, then you need the chemotherapy, and that obviously has to take precedence. At the same time, there are some strategies that might diminish the chances of developing a neuropathy. We'll get to those in just a moment. First, the chemotherapeutic drugs that can cause neuropathies include the platins like cisplatin and oxaliplatin, as well as the taxols, also vincristine, vinblastine, uh, thalidomide, linalidomide. The chances of these medications causing a neuropathy is often dose-dependent, so spreading out treatments or taking breaks between treatments, if possible given the cancer, can sometimes reduce the chance of neuropathies from developing. Additionally, studies are mixed, but some studies have suggested that vitamin E can help reduce the chance of neuropathies from platinum-based chemotherapies like cisplatin. Also, alpha-lipoic acid is a supplement that has shown promise at reducing the chance of developing a chemotherapy-induced neuropathy. And glutamine has also shown some promise at reducing the chance of developing a neuropathy. For oxaliplatin, there's evidence that cold therapy like Wearing ice gloves or socks during treatment might reduce the likelihood of developing a neuropathy, presumably because the cold slows down the metabolic processes that might otherwise lead to nerve damage. Of course, of course, if you need chemotherapy treatment, discuss these potential strategies with your doctor. Certain antibiotics can also cause neuropathies, specifically the fluoroquinolones like Cipro and Levaquin, as well as moxifloxacin, also metronidazole, nitrofuritin, isoniazin, and linozilid can all cause neuropathies. With antibiotics, the key is really to monitor yourself to see if you develop symptoms, and if you do develop symptoms, then to discuss these with your doctor as soon as possible, because you may want to change the antibiotic if that's possible. Additionally, if you're at a high risk for developing a neuropathy, such as if you have long-standing diabetes, if you're an alcoholic, uh, then you may want to discuss with your doctor if there are alternative antibiotics that might also work for you. Now, for isoniazid, if you also take pyridoxine, aka vitamin B6, then this takes away the risk of neuropathy, so always take isoniazid with pyridoxine. Cardiovascular drugs can also cause neuropathies. Amiodarone can cause neuropathies, and an uncommon potential side effect of statins can actually be a neuropathy. Now, if a statin does cause neuropathy, it's often reversible if you stop the statin. Please don't just stop the statin on your own. Talk to your doctor about the pros and cons. But ideally, in these rare cases, you could find another way of controlling your cholesterol other than the statin, if possible. Other potential medication causes of neuropathies would include antiretrovirals for HIV uh, and zal zalkitabine, TNF-alpha inhibitors like infliximab, phenytoin, hydralazine, disulfiram, chloroquinolone, colchicine, all of these can also cause neuropathies. And it's important to be aware of different medications that can cause neuropathies because for one, if you start to develop symptoms of a neuropathy while on these medications, you'll want to talk to your doctor immediately about what to do next. Also, if you do have significant risk factors for a neuropathy or if you already have a neuropathy, then it's a good idea to discuss with your doctor if there are medication alternatives that might also be appropriate for the condition that you're trying to treat in order to mitigate the chance that your nerves are negatively affected. I hope you found this video useful. If you've enjoyed it, if you've learned something from it, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and tell a friend who might find some benefit from the channel as well. As always, if you have topics that you would like for us to cover in a future video, or if you have any other comments, including your own experiences uh, with these or other medications, then please leave a message in the comment section. As always, I wish you all the best of health. Thank you very much.